So now let's talk about multiple regression. Up to now, we've been talking about bivariate regression, two variables, one relationship, right? And this is our bivariate regression equation. But now if one predictor is good, why not add more predictors? Additional predictors may make the model better, may make it more predictive. So let's see what happens there. We can easily, all we really have to do here is add additional predictors, additional x's to our equation. So of course the notation is going to have to change a little bit because we stick with b for the, the coefficient of our predictors and we stick with x for our predictors no matter how many we add here. So this changes to say, now we number them. So b1 is the first predictor, or x1 is the first predictor, b1 is the coefficient associated with the first predictor, b2, x2, right, plus, instead of a, we're now going to use b sub 0. Right? And so our multiple regression equation, b sub 0 is the y-intercept, b sub 1 is the coefficient for the first predictor, b sub 2 is the coefficient for the second predictor. I was going to write this a different way. I usually start actually with b sub 0 plus b1 x1 plus b2 x2. And I actually can go all the way out, right? So I can have b3 x3, 3 all the way out to however many predictors I need, b sub j, x sub j, for as many as I need, right? So multi multivariate regression, multiple regression, has multiple predictor variables, x1, x2, x3, all the way out to xj, with each with its own coefficient, b sub 1, b sub 2, b sub 3, all the way out to b sub j, and b sub 0 then is the y-intercept. And we can kind of start thinking of these as weights, right? So we often hear these called regression weights, uh, the weight associated with each predictor. Because there's kind of heaviness, right, is kind of the analogy here. A predictor that is more important is more predictive of y, right? Not all of these will predict in the same way. And a, a, a variable, a predictor variable that is more predictive of our outcome variable is going to get more weight. Uh, we're going to see a, a more important weight, a more important... Uh, not necessarily higher because of scaling issues, but a more important coefficient there. Um, so that's what we want. That's what we want to call. We want our more powerful predictors to have more weight, and typically that's going, that's going to happen. Now, b sub one here, the interpretation changes just a little bit. Back in in bivariate regression, the interpretation was a single point increase in x. You know, b is a single point increase in x. It results in a b increase in y. So it's the rate of change in y uh, given a single point increase in x. In multiple regression, that's true, but it's only true of this one predictor. We have to hold all the other predictors constant. So b sub 1 is the rate of change in y for a single point change in x sub 1, holding all other predictors constant, right? All other variables constant. Um, so it's not just the rate of change. It's the rate of change holding all these other variables constant. And this is going to change depending on what these other variables are. As we add or subtract variables to this, this rate of change will actually be different across different equations. Um, so it only tells us the rate of change as I, what we call partial out all these other ones, right? So this is sometimes called the partial rate of change. Because it's the rate of change when I hold these other variables constant. It's not quite as straightforward as just being a rate of change in and of itself. Um, so uh, in the next video, I'm going to go through an example of how we would interpret this. And you'll see why this makes a difference, why we call it this, this rate of change, this partial rate of change. But that's our multiple regression equation.